what's up it's chocolate desire and i'm this is gonna be like a super quick video normally i sit here and i go through each and every step of the plot but i'm not gonna do that today i'm trying to chill because i just finished this old girl she kind of scary though like like looking at her next to me it looked like she's she's like coming out and i should be moving but i drew her so we friends we friends we good we good right we good anyway um texas chainsaw massacre just came out today and i actually had forgotten about it but i guess that's okay because if i had remembered i might not have finished her anyway uh so yeah i'm here to talk about texas chainsaw massacre because who who asked for this who asked for this i didn't but you know what i'm glad you made it because it's a good movie it's a really good movie um you know, it, it has like the typical thing with horror movies where characters make like not the best decision, but I'm not mad at it. I actually really enjoyed it. Yes, I would watch it two times, three times. I would watch it five times. Like if I have a friend who has not yet seen this movie and they were like, yo, come over, get the popcorn, let's go. I would be over to watch it. And that is saying something because I was not a fan of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Not in the slightest. Um, not because they were bad movies. I just don't like a lot of those movies that came out, which funnily enough started the slasher genre pretty much. So movies like Friday the 13th, I think the first few Friday the 13th are actually quite boring and I liked the reboot. Oh my god. Um, but anyway, anyway, I guess if I had to put a trigger warning in front of this movie, it would be for um, like school shootings, mass shootings. One of the characters has survived a mass shooting and um just blood everywhere but it's texas chainsaw massacre so if you clicked on that movie with the man wearing a person's face and you i don't know what to tell you um anyway let me get into the story so texas chainsaw massacre 2022 netflix exclusive movie starts out with us uh driving towards the town of hardin texas this group of people in the car uh two of them are like some kind of chefs or something and they have bought just like the whole town just the whole thing it's all theirs and they are going to start a new community there because uh the girl there's a girl chef and a man chef okay the girl chef her sister was just in a mass shooting event at her school she's clearly dealing with like some uh just just some stuff that it is reasonable to deal with after you've been in such a situation uh and her sister is like fuck it we're going out we're going like to bumfuck texas we're gonna build some new shit fuck everybody you know so it's uh four people in the car the two chefs one of the chef's sister and the other woman is the fiance of the guy chef okay so they get there and they go into an orphanage which i'm not a fan of texas chainsaw but the way that they filmed it lets me know that that orphanage was probably significant in some way that was supposed to clue me in as to who was sitting inside the orphanage but girl like i said I don't fuck with that <laughs> series like that. They go in, there's a woman in there, little old woman, and she's like, um, this my house. Ooh, before I forget, they had the Confederate flag. I don't fuck with that. Um, for obvious reasons, like, I don't fuck with that. Um, anyway, they were trying to remove the Confederate flag because they were under the impression that this was indeed their property now because they bought the whole town from the bank right little old woman comes out and she's like um bitch this is my house 
I have the deed. I paid everything to the bank. That was a misunderstanding. What the fuck? And the two chefs are like, um, excuse me, ma'am. No, this is our property now. You need to get the fuck out. Neither side, though, shows a deed or any paperwork saying that they own the house. So nobody knows who actually owns the house. The two chefs call the police in and the the old lady starts having some kind of like panic attack she's like hyperventilating and stuff like very clearly this drama with potentially losing her house like it sounds like this wasn't the first time that she had to fight for her goddamn house um and she's she ends up dying in the car on the way to the hospital and guess guess who her son is at the um orphanage he's at like the top of the steps very clearly it's leatherface uh and he did go to the hospital with them uh on the way to the hospital because she dies on the way uh, it was the two police officers leatherface the old lady and the fiance of course when mother passes in his arms, Leatherface goes ape shit, And I feel like, I'm not sure, cause again, I'm not like a, an aficionado on Leatherface. It sounded like she was giving him permission to go fuck shit up because what was happening was completely wrong, you know? It's okay, Leatherface kills everybody in the car. There are some really, there's some really good tension here like you just it's you don't know where he's gonna pop out i i really liked it um leatherface makes his way back to the town and we jump back to the town too while he's on his way you know he's walking there and this is the point where um they get a text so the two chefs and the sister three people now they get a text and it's like uh that old lady died oops and the lady chef is like yo that's that's not cool i don't even feel comfortable anymore i'm taking my sister and we are leaving so she does actually like take her sister but uh there's this dude who uh was like blasting metal music and stuff i think he's like a caretaker of the property or something who had initially given them like all the keys to all the places and junk. Long story short, um, the sister was with him. They kind of start bickering because the old lady's dead. So the caretaker then goes up to the bus and he just snatches the keys out of the bus. And he's like, look, I heard that that old lady died. And that shit ain't right. Y'all killed that old woman. You had her having like a panic attack, like show some kind of remorse or something. And that's when they're like, okay, 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 fine. I'm gonna just go and get the deed. We have all of the deeds in our um, car. And he's like flipping through the file, flipping through the file. Oh shit, we didn't own that house. That was her house, oops. Um, yeah, so Leatherface is back. They went into the orphanage to see if they would find the deed there because then that would prove that no, she actually had owned that house. Like, it's not our misstep, it's not back at the office, it is in her house because that was her house. That is Leatherface's house, probably. Um, they find the deed, of course. Uh, the chef dude gets just the absolute shit hacked out of him like he's got like a gash all up his face uh the chef girl manages to hide she hides a couple times and she doesn't get hurt in the house until the caretaker comes in with his keys because the chef guy has uh, stumbled out with his face all cut open so the caretaker is like woo and he goes in with his gun and he gets he gets got our chef girl she gets the keys off of the caretaker's body and she tries to sneak out but bitch leather face is fast how is he that fast how is leather face that fast 
Like it doesn't make any sense. And he has a chainsaw and he's like a bigger guy. And he doesn't look like he's really running for real. He looks like he's kind of like, oh, I'm going a little bit fast. Look, why is he so damn fast? And they show him moving faster than you think he should. How, that is magic. I, mm. Anyway, she gets like a hammer thrown into her. And again, like this is like a really good scene. Like there's a lot of like uh, anticipation, tension. There's like a gross out thing uh, that I won't reveal. You can watch it yourself because I really think it is that good a movie. Um, but her sister gets out of the bus and she actually finds her before uh, she can get cut. Let me go on and get these people names because you're going to need names. I can't say the girl, the chef and her sister. The chef's name is Mel. The sister is Lila. Also, meanwhile, somewhere else in Texas, um, the... The final girl from the first movie from 1974 had become a sheriff. And she'd been looking for this motherfucker for decades, okay? Uh, she is Sally Hardesty, is her name, Sally Hardesty. Sally's on her way. She done her leather faces back and she, she ready. She got the shotgun, she coming, okay? And I'm like, yes, more badass old bitches in horror. Like, you don't have to have your titties shaking around to be, like, a horror girl. Come on, badass old bitches. And the reason that I say that is, like, part of the reason that I don't really say I fuck with Texas Chainsaw Massacre is I remember being bored during the movie. And the only plus point at that time that, I that like, sticks in my head is that is Sally's titties in the tank top. <laughs> they they were bouncing and she was running and it felt like that's the part that you were supposed to watch frankly anyway uh sally's back and she finna fuck that boy up lila and mel actually do end up making it to the bus the bus driver closes the door starts the engine they start to drive away but you know, this fast motherfucker Leatherface, he, it's not a fast bus either. It, it looks like a very old school bus that, that I would have to sit in the back of, okay? Um, but anyway, he takes out one of the tires, the bus stops naturally, and he just start chainsawing people. And it's giving Lila these flashbacks to the mass shooting event that happened at her school and she feels like, you know, she should have died that day. And just like a whole bunch of other, like really sad stuff. Sally finally gets there. Sally finally gets there. And she started just busting caps in this motherfucker, but he's leather face. So of course he's not going down, which is some bullshit. Horror movie, slasher movie villains are just a pile of bullshit sometimes, you know? Sally does not make it, unfortunately. Leatherface gets the best of her. She's laying in a pile of trash, presumably dead, as he continues to chase Mel and Lila around. Now, I'm skipping over a scene that really pissed me off. See, this movie would have gotten, like, perfect five stars, bitch. Loved it. But this is, like one of the most infuriating decisions in the whole movie there's a scene with a car where lila and mel could have driven away like they could have just left but obviously that didn't happen eventually lila and mel do get the better of leatherface uh lila shoots him a couple times and mel like chainsaws his face and he falls into some water and they think he's dead. They get into like this car. Like it's it's one of those like auto piloted things where you just tell it where to go and it goes there, okay? They hit the buttons. They're like, whew, girl, we gonna go. Um, and, and the sister's like, okay, I will move in with you. And they're like, eh, heh, 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 heh. and boom, 
Leatherface. And that's where you get like a scene that is very similar to the last scene where Sally gets away, where she is uh, just like screaming hysterical out of the window as she looks back because Mel is dead. I loved it. Like that, that is my, that is, that is my criticism. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is my good point i really liked this movie um like if i was to seriously give some kind of criticisms i felt like and i'm not gonna say it's not realistic because this kind of thing does happen in real life a whole lot i felt like there was no excuse for the police actually coming and not clearing up who actually owned the house for real for real like it, it looked yes the lady was in a panic she's probably having like flashbacks to when the bank tried to take her house before i understand all of that but i feel like if you were sitting there in this person's property the first thing that i would do before I sat at the table, I would say, excuse me, ma'am, um, I'm going to go back out to my car and I'm going to get this deed so I can show you that I have this deed. Like, I wouldn't go in with, like, no proof. Just like, okay, bitch, this is my house. Get out. I wouldn't have done that, especially because, like, you're new here. You didn't even know that the guy that you pissed off at the gas station was your caretaker. Or I'm calling him a caretaker. I don't know. I don't remember what they called him. But he was he was there. This this was a man that you should have been nice to at the gas station. Like and baby girl, I'm sorry. This Texas you should have been just fucking glad that he wasn't carrying a big ass assault rifle. Yes, I know. Fucking gun legislation in the U.S. is a nightmare. I know that. But the reality of the situation is that little bitty ass gun he had on him was not enough to start a fight with a random stranger at a gas station. And girl, Melody, who starts a fight with a motherfucker with a gun? I guess we should have known she wasn't gonna make it. This bitch started a fight with random dudes with a gun. Anyway, it was a good movie. I liked it. I recommend it. You should definitely just go watch it if you got Netflix. If you don't, bitch get somebody password or something i don't know watch the movie thank you for watching though this is a shorter one because i didn't want to go through like the story every beat and like i said i've been busy but this is not gonna stay on my wall this is actually going to a friend and i'm thinking about doing like a, a little tattoo vlog because if you don't know i am now a tattoo apprentice i'm practicing tattooing though i have not tattooed a person at this point i'm thinking about vlogging it i don't know it depends on how i feel that day anyway i'm gonna catch y'all later um hopefully this sadako don't catch me because she is really messing with me right now i'm trying not to look at it <laughs> see y'all bye